Hello and welcome to another video. In this one in particular, we're going to be talking about how not to break your hero board with the emphasis on the not because you should not repeat what I do to my board in this video to your board or it will likely break. This is just simply due to the limitations of the hardware. In particular, I'm going to be going over five common mistakes made by newer rookies, inventors, etc. that generally end up with a broken board. So without further ado, let's get into method one. Okay, so for method one, I'm actually going to be combining method or example one, two, and three simply because they're very similar, where you're either putting too much current, too much voltage, or drawing too much power from a pin. For example, I will start off with mentioning the limit of the I.O. pins is only 40 milliamps um, in terms of what you can put onto the pin. and the limit of the barrel jack here is 20 volts. So if you put more than 40 into one of these pins, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and or A0 through A5, it will probably not be able to handle that. And for the limit of the barrel jack at 20 volts, it can take quite a lot more if you want to have put a lot of voltage into there. But of course, if you put more than that, there could be issues where you fry the entire board. So for example one, I'm going to start with the I.O. pins and that would be putting high to ground. For example, I have two examples actually. I'm going to look at the following code. Now, with this code here we have void setup and I'm ignoring this bottom part here. Um, we're setting pin 13 to be an output and writing it to high. Now, high is equivalent to 5 volts. Um, if you were to connect 13 to ground in this scenario, as it says right here, you will break pin 13. So if you have the following code and you ran it on the board and you put it onto here, 13, and you went, oh, let's connect this right here. Hey, pin 13 doesn't work anymore. That's not good. And alternatively, if you have the following code here, connecting 12 to 13, and you have 13 as an output, 12 as an output, and you have 12 and 13, one being high and one being low, because remember, high is five volts, and in this case, low would be equal to the ground voltage. If I go here now, and I had that second set of code, and I connect boom to boop, 12 and 13 are now broken, or they probably will be. And if you want to know how that's calculated, we use Ohm's law, which states that voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. We know the voltage was 5 volts because that's high coming off of 13. And we know that the current is what we're trying to solve for. And the resistance, based on the specifications of the hardware, is about 25 ohms for each I.O. pin. If you were to solve for current, you would get about 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps. And if we remember, the limit is 40. 40 is definitely less than the 200 milliamps. So, in fact, it's about five times over what we should be putting on one of those pins. In other words, it's going to break. I and mean, that's not a good thing. So, the next thing that I was going to mention is if you were to connect up to five micro server motors, which draw about, on average, 10 milliamps each, onto one I.O. pin. And if you were to do that, remember the limit of the I.O. pins is about 40 milliamps. So if you were to connect five micro server motors at 10 each, that's 50 milliamps, and you would have the issue of drawing too much power, and that could fry multiple things on the board. So also be careful of that. And so for example three, we have plugging in a large power source, in this example a 9 volt battery, into things that just simply cannot handle it. So first of all, we have if you were to plug it into an I.O. pin, because that's one we're using a lot for this, for this example, 
remember that this is 9 volts. This is higher than 5 volts, which means that the current is actually going to be about 9 or 10 times as much as we should be putting on one of these pins, and you're going to break something. So don't plug in a battery or something like that into one of these pins. It's not usually a great idea to do that. The I.O. pins in particular, and we'll go on to another example later where we talk about the voltage in and ground here, which is another story. But for now, those are the first three I wanted to mention for overloading. And next we'll get into method four. Okay, so for method four, we're taking the battery again. In this particular example, we're not putting it into the I.O. pins, we're putting it into the voltage in. But we'd be doing it backwards because it's a common rookie mistake to where this is the right way to do it, where the positive goes into the voltage in, VIN, and the negative goes into the ground. But if you were kind of silly and decided to swap them like so, you'd break some pins and that wouldn't be good. So don't do that. And that's about all I need to say for that. In fact, you'd probably fry a lot more than just those two pins. You'd probably end up frying the microcontroller and a bunch of other things. So do not do that. And then finally, let's move on to the last method in this video for how boards are commonly broken. Okay, and so for method five, hey, I'm just gonna pause the video here for just one second. I actually already recorded the video, but I wanted to come back and add in another point, which was simply that if you were to put in the power for the barrel connector and the USB port at the same time, you also can overload it with too much power. So do not plug in you know, multiple power sources at once, unless you know what you're doing. Obviously, we talked about Ohm's Law and whatnot, and overloading certain pins or ports or whatever can definitely break things, so just be warned. Thank you. I'm gonna ask you to please not put it in the blender, make a smoothie out of it, and go and drink it, because of two reasons. One is there's a physical limitation to how much the board can take. That's with any normal piece of hardware, it just can't take too much physical damage. So if you're gonna stuff it in a bag, stuff it, you know, there's a chance that things can bend, things can pull off. You need to treat it well, as you would any other piece of hardware like your phone or anything else. Also, the second reason you don't wanna do that is because I wouldn't recommend eating the hardware that's probably not good for your health, don't do that. Okay, so as much as that last one was a joke, for the most part, obviously physical damage is something to look out for. Everything else before that was 100% legitimate rookie mistakes that commonly do happen. And hopefully now you're more informed on how not to break your hero board based on ways that it can be broken. TLDR, don't put too much voltage on any of these things and don't put too much current on any of these things. And most of the reasons the board breaks are basically ridden of. So just be careful what you're plugging in and what it goes to. And hopefully there shouldn't be any broken boards ever. Other than that, I would like to thank you guys for watching and hope you tune in again next time. Thank you so much.